What is up guys? I figured I'd go over the enhanced input mapping. Um, it's really pretty cool. It's pretty easy to set up. Um, it's a little bit like more lightweight work. And then once you get it, you're like, oh, right, okay. So I figured I'd help you get it. So the first thing you're gonna wanna do is go into your plugins and we're gonna search for the enhance. This is in the 4.27 preview, by the way. It won't be in 4.26. Um, it's also in 5.0, obviously. Um, so we're going to turn that on and we're coming to projects and you're going to come into input and you can actually ignore most of this now. All we're going to do is come down to default classes and you'll see that these are set to, they'll be like this. They'll be input component player input. We'll make enhance and we'll do enhance. Sweet. So now you're all set up. Your, your character is using it now magically, right? Um, but you need to make a few things. So first thing we need to do, you're going to right click and you're going to come into input. And we can make an input action. I already have one. I've called it attack. Um, and you'll see that there's not actually any keys or anything in here. That's fine. Don't worry. So what we're going to do, this consumes the input. We can trigger when pause, reserve all mappings. Um, we can choose a value type. So we've got digital. This is going to be a Boolean. Um, so if it's on or off. Um, we have axis 1D, so this is going to be very similar to the way they did axes for your, your movement, right? It will be 1 and minus 1. Um, maybe you can change the, the values, like the min-max, but probably not. Um, and then you have triggers. So we can have we have things here, like you can do a corded action. Um, must be triggered for this trigger action to trigger. Cool. That's a, I'm triggered by that sentence, to be honest with you. Um, so anyway, we, yeah, we, you can... On, on the button down or on button up, whatever, right? Um, we can have it wherever we want it held, release, press pulse, pulse. Is that like a tap maybe? Oh no, that's tap. I don't know what pulse is, um, but we'll do hold, right? So I'm gonna set this to like two seconds. Um, and we have a bit of a threshold if we want it. We also have modifiers, so we can do like a dead zone, FOV scaling, apply scaling, sure. Um, <laughs> We have a collection of modifiers. I guess you can make modifier collections now and uh, perhaps store them as a struct of some sort so you can apply multiple. Um, we can negate, of course, uh, use curves, scalars. We can smooth things out and even change our input actions to like world space if we want to. It's kind of nutty. Um, and I'm sure that if you really know how, you can go and make your own ones of these as well. So. You can do cool stuff. This is just this is this is just our event, right? So so this is just our attack. Um, how do we actually use it now? Because we've determined how we want it to work. How do we use it? Well, we need to make a context. So in here we're gonna this will be empty. You're gonna add a mapping and you're gonna say, oh my attack input, my attack event rather, my action. Um, yeah, we'll just stick that on left mouse button. Um, if you want, you can add the triggers and the modifiers in here instead. Um, there's a reason for this, and I'll show you'll you'll see why in a minute, um, which is cool. You can do it either way; it doesn't particularly matter. Um, bear in mind, though, that this one is like permanent because it's always on the input, whereas this context we can change at runtime and do other things with it. So it's a bit more, uh, it's less rigid, and and it's probably better to put things in here, really. Um, but anyway, so. Now we know what we need, right? We need a context that tells our character what to do, uh, what actions to use when we press our inputs, and we have our input, which determines how it's working and what it's doing. So when we come into our character, there's one thing we need to do. Uh, we need to move all this away so you, you don't get too confused. Uh, oh, um, you're going to get your player controller, and you're going to get the enhanced input local player subsystem. This is basically uh, what handles are the inputs now, um, or it's at least what handles the mappings and stuff. I don't think it handles the actual inputs, but it handles the mapping maybe. Um, I'm not entirely sure, whatever. Anyway, this is what you need. And then this is going to give you lots of options with input uh, mapping queries. And we also have, I believe it's enhanced something. Where is it? Uh, where, where, where's the add? Oh, it was just an input. There's a there's an add mapping context, which is what you want, right? So, when the game's when when now we've added all this and we've made this stuff, but the game doesn't actually the character doesn't know what to use yet. So, we're going to add a mapping context and we're going to say, hey, I want you to use that input query that we just set up. And what we have in here is that its attack is going to be left mouse button. 
So if I press left mouse button, we can see, yeah, it's doing something. Okay, cool. Um, so so, so why, why is it cool to have these things split the way they are? Um, well, let's say you have an ability that makes your character fly. Um, and it, when you're in the air, you want to have a different ability set. Uh, say you're making a Superman game. When you're on the ground, you're punching. When you're in the air, um, you want to be able to shoot lasers at your eyes. You're going to have a right click. Won't be a heavy attack. It will be a an aim, and then it will be a, a shoot or something, right? So you can have, you know, uh, an aim action and a shoot action, um, and you could at runtime change the context. So your attack can now be, you know, you could have nothing on this, and you could have your left mouse button be shoot or whatever. But for for this, we'll say F is now attack, right, for context one. So left mouse button, and then we have F. So if I, it's kind of gonna kind of gonna be hard for you to see, but if I come in here and I say, okay, when I begin play, I wanna use input mapping context one, but when I use an event, I actually want you to remove input context um, from this, we need, we need one of these. And then I want you to add input context one and while you can't see what my hands are doing i can promise you that if i press left click now we're getting the ability pop up i mean it's just words but whatever um and if i press f nothing happens um if i press one then pressing my left mouse button is suddenly doing nothing i'm getting nothing happening and if i press f now i'm getting the attack so you can very quickly swap all your mappings at runtime so you say have you played re games recently made in UE where um, think Outriders, Godfall, um, where they've had to like totally mess around with the key mappings when they go into UI um, because it's literally not possible for them to change things properly at runtime right now. Um, well, I'm sure it is, but not with the built-in stuff that they're probably too lazy to in, in using. Um, so this solves all that right this is probably where this stems from it's developers saying dear god your input stuff is out of date and this completely solves all of that um so what else can we do with it there's there's actually a lot so we can query um the maps context and uh which i believe is just whether or not it's being used i'm not entirely sure what the context means um and we can even uh query the the actions uh the the keys mapped to certain actions so we could say, oh, the attack one, uh, what keys can even use that? And then this could be great for filling in your, um, uh, like a, a screen for uh, an options menu for changing your values and stuff, right? Because we have unmapping actions and we can map and unmap keys. So this is really cool. We can map and unmap at runtime, really easy. Um, this does it to the currently equipped context, I believe. Um, and oh no, I'm sorry. It's not the currently equipped one. It's the one that is in a variable. The only way you can access these is via making a variable that is of type input mapping context, and then picking the context you want. So it was. It's, it's not that. So you 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 pick the context you want via a variable, and then you can come in here and we'll have all the the mapping and input stuff. Um, you can check has it got a certain context. Um, is a certain key mapped to an action, blah, blah, blah. We can map keys, unmap actions, unmap all, and we can unmap keys. Um, so that's pretty dope. And then obviously once you've done this, you can query them and update them in your inventory options menus and whatever, right? Um, so yeah, cool stuff. Context is cool. These, these things are very cool. It allows us to change all the buttons instantly. Nice. So, what else, what, what's more, what can we do with the actual events, right? So what happens when we press the button? Um, well, we get a couple of things. Um, we can, if I scroll down to the input section, I can show you where. So we have uh, enhanced input actions, uh, enhan enhanced action events and enhanced action values. So we have uh, attack and uh, attack here, which is obviously the one input I have. Um, and we can get the value and that will return this, or we can get the event and that will return this. 
So this will this is the same as this action value here. Um, we can just use that without you know needing whatever if we just want to check the value. Um, but we have a really nice amount of things happening here. So it's pretty self-explanatory. Um, when you press the button, it's going to start. So we get this once. Um, so this is basically on button down. Uh, we have an ongoing. So the reason you would have an ongoing is because of things like hold. So in this case, it's going to print out ongoing for two seconds um, on frame, right? Um, because it's that's what it's doing. It's ongoing and waiting for the condition to become true. Um, if we let go of the button before the timer is up, before those two seconds become true, then we're going to get uh, a cancelled which is the mouse, uh, mount, I put mouse, but key, key up before condition. Um, we have tr triggered, which is when the condition is met. And then we have completed, which is basically after the condition is met, once you've released the key. So it's kind of like a key up. Um, we also have, um, oh, but it's not a key up if you've canceled. So it, yeah. <laughs> Um, we also have, you know, elapsed seconds, triggered seconds, and the action value. So the action value will only return true after we've triggered. So you can see here I have it attached to ongoing and triggered. So if I come in here and hold down, you can see it goes false and then condition met true. Sweet. Um, and yeah, that's kind of it. So we have a lot more options. Things are easier to set up. I mean, there's a little bit of setting up because you need to now, um, uh, just to make this work, you have to at least do this at begin play. Um, this is quite important, otherwise nothing's gonna work. So there's a little bit of setup now, but in general, it's pretty sweet. It's pretty sweet. Um, you can do a lot with it and I think it's, um, Oh, it's by far better than anything we've had available in UE. So, yeah. Uh, thank you very much, guys. I hope that's been informative for you. And, uh, yeah, thanks very much. See you next time.